Buenos Aires, Argentina. Left and down a bit from Britain. 20 ordinary everyday folk, including a teaching assistant, a doctor and a barber, are about to put mind, body and soul to the test. 19 will leave with nothing. One will be crowned the champion and walk away with £10,000. Let the games begin. Welcome to Total Wipeout. Somewhere in South America, there's an obstacle course that people from all over the world try and fail to conquer. Once again, tonight, it's the UK's turn. For the one lucky winner, a £10,000 cash prize and one hell of a story to tell the grandkids. For the 19 unlucky losers, no money. And one hell of a story to tell the grandkids. So while our contestants are warming up, let's see what they've got to come. The qualifier, bouncy and wet. The sweeper, jumpy and wet. Dizzy dummies, wobbly and wet. And finally, the wipeout zone, the biggest, hardest and wettest of the lot. But let's start at the start with the qualifier, where only the fastest 12 of our 20 will make it through to the next round. And here's what they have to do. Today's first obstacle is the rolling logs, or, as I like to call them, the falling off logs. Then it's on to the sucker punch, a large number of boxing gloves and the small chance of remaining mud-free. Next, it's Old Faithful, the big balls. No one's crossed them yet. Will anyone ever make it across? And backed by popular demand, it's a swing into the bubble bath, where the clock stops. And if you think that sounds easy, then you haven't been paying attention. It's now show five, and not one person has crossed those big balls. Could this be the week? Let's go over now to my co-host and resident giggler, Amanda Byron. Here with me now at the top of the Total Wipeout course is Laura. Now, Laura, have you been preparing for this extremely, ridiculously insane obstacle course today? Well, I am an experienced obstacle course builder, Amanda. I used to build them in my back garden, my living room, everywhere. I was always building obstacle courses. So, Laura, uh, was your garden 450 feet long with four big red balls in it then? Um, no. Where do you live? Finchley Road. Not quite the same, is it? Mm, no. Watch me wipe out! <laughs> oh, oh dear. 24-year-old <laughs> marketing executive Laura can barely contain her excitement. Or maybe it's fair. I don't know, but she can't contain it. Making her way to the rolling logs now. If you saw them last week, you'll know they're not easy. Balance is needed. Here we go. She's off. See? Not easy. I think I've just gone deaf in one ear. Yeah, Laura's scream there reached 90 decibels. That's illegal in built-up areas after 11 p.m. Now, because she failed to make it past the second log, it's a swim back to the start for another attempt. And she's looking exhausted already. Come on, Laura. Here we go. Second attempt at the rolling logs. Right, let's see if she's learned. She's on the first log. Steady. Not a lot of progress. Oh, she's away. She's away. Oh, oh. Now she's stuck. Well, this is her second attempt, which means she doesn't have to clear the second log. She can now go on. On to the sucker punch now, so cover your ears. There may be screaming. There will be. Oh. It's not going to scare them off. Well, she's fallen in the mud. But it has stopped the screaming. So I like to see the positive in everything. On to the big balls now. And she is raring to go, I'm sure. Yes. Focus. You can do it. Yes, you can. Come on, Laura. Come on, Laura. We're all with you. Oh. Well, she's managed to land on the first big ball and stay on. Let me do it. Well, we'll see. Oh! Ah! 
Well done, though, Laura, because that was a technique we haven't seen before, and it looked very promising, up to the point where you fell in. Now, the clock does keep on ticking as shrieking Laura has to take the long, wet, laddery route past the obstacle onto the bubble bath. So, come on, you're almost there, Laura. Catch the handle, prepare to swing. Please don't die. <laughs> Did she say, please don't die? Oh, that's loud. Oh! <laughs> that scream reached 95 decibels, which is the same as an underground tube train. Apologies if you're watching with one of those fancy surround sound systems. That will have hurt. Nearly there, it's all about speed. Yep, speed is no particular friend of Laura's right now, Amanda. She's done it! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I made her look okay. You're perfect. <laughs> After spending most of her time holding her nose and falling in the wet stuff, Laura posts a leisurely time of seven minutes and nine seconds. Will our next contestant do any better? Dickie, how would your friends and family describe you? Uh, well, I, they'd probably call me a bit of a gentle giant. Yeah. Um, Kind of lovable. So how are you going to tackle the course today in this big competition? Um, I think I'm just going to smash my way through it. So this is house husband Dickie from Port Talbot. He says his good points are balance, strength and being able to think on his feet. OK, he's up. Oh. Onto the rolling logs. First obstacle. Balance, remember, one of Dickie's strengths should see his weaknesses. Yeah, it, it let him down there. Quite badly. The sucker punch now. And can the house husband Dickie keep it tidy? Doing well so far. Well, he's just shrugging it off. He is wiping the floor with it. Oh, look at that. Well, it's... Oh, no! Oh, at the last second! That was a very good attempt from the gentle giant. He just couldn't hold on at the end. Didn't mind the boxing gloves. It was the grip. Doing great, Dickie. So now it's the big balls. They probably just look like normal-sized footballs to this gentle giant. Don't worry, they'll support you. Here we go. Oh. oh. Ordinarily, I'd say the balls put our competitors to the test, but the way Dickie hit that second ball, I think he put it to the test. Didn't stand a chance. Poor ball. Looking a little short of breath there, but the clock is still ticking. Just the bubble bath to go. Come on, Dickie. Come on. Finish well. Up the ladder, onto the platform, unhitch the rope, swing. Come on, Dickie, you can do it. Yes, he can, I'm sure. Oh, dear. He's going to need quite a grip, I suspect. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now he's, he's off. <laughs> With that fall, Dickie will have to swim around to the pontoon where the clock will stop. There, there you see. One last heave. <laughs> Woohoo! Yes. Five minutes, 56 there. Oh, oh there's that balance again. It is nice to see Amanda, though, always on hand to boost our contestants' self-esteem. Carrie, I believe you've got three young kids at home. How on earth have you had time to prepare for this? Well, I'm really lucky. I've got a fantastic husband who does all the cooking, cleaning, washing, ironing, <laughs> basically all the housework, so I get plenty of time for myself. Well, listen, then, if you want to wipe out, clearly you would either give him all the money or buy him something fabulous. Yeah, I'd buy him a tumble dryer. <laughs> Wow, Carrie Ann's husband must be on the edge of his seat. She's off, though. Carrie Ann's a business advisor. Her eldest son, Owen, talked her into applying for Total Wipeout because he thought it would be funny to see his mum falling over. <laughs> oh! Oh, well, everybody wins. That's one for you, Owen. And she's across the third barrel. There it is again, Owen. Just in case you missed it, your mum falling over. Right then, the big balls. Go on, carry on. Be the one. Be the one. You're not the one. At least there'll be less washing for poor old Dad. With his tumble dryer. Lucky man. 
Meet our next contestant, Manda, with a rundown of the qualities she feels she's bringing to the Total Wipeout course. I'm tactless, I'm argumentative, I'm jolly, and I'm always late. And she's also a 35-year-old barber from Somerset. Being a barber, Manda should be used to rollers. <laughs> you see, rollers are... Yeah, OK. Oh, she fell in. On to the sucker punch now. Yes, let's not get too cocky. Premature celebratory dance there. Let's hope the wall doesn't wreak its revenge. Oh, I did it! Right on the bonds. Ow! Stick to haircuts, Manda. No good with uppercuts. And I'm joined now by Dan. So, Dan, um, tell me where you live. I live in the woods, in a treehouse with dwarfs. It's true. I love you. I love you too. I'm Dan the Ginger Ninja and I'm going to tackle this course. Yeah! So the self-proclaimed Ginger Ninja sets off head first, which is his first mistake. He's gone. He's back. Onto the first pontoon and away towards the rollers. <laughs> well, yes! Dan could be a lumberjack. Log rolling skills, check. Substantial beard, check. Check shirt, not check. I'm confusing myself now. Wow, that was impressive. This could be the time to beat. Onto the sucker punch. Dan teaches survival skills for a living. He should be able to avoid a few plastic punching bags. <laughs> or not. A thing of beauty. Sucker punch and ginger ninja uniting in perfect harmony. With a punch to the face. Yeah, he didn't survive that. So it's on to the big balls. Helmets falling apart. Ginger power, Dan! Oh. Big red ball time. Yes! Oh. <laughs> I love this guy as well. <laughs> the ginger ninja takes a bath. And here comes the bubble bath. Can he do it? A swing and a land in the bath. Here we go. Yes! A perfect landing, the first today. As he's landed in the donut, the clock stops. One minute 43 is the best so far. So I'm joined at the top of the course now by Carla. And Carla, you're a DJ. So will you uh, be spinning your way round the course today? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to fly through this course today um, with the help of my spirit guide, Crystal Vale, who is an ancient Egyptian belly dancing spirit who dances in my body sometimes. So I'm hoping while I'm doing the course, Crystal Vale's energy Crystal Vale's energy come energy in and help, help me make that help jump and that jump and that swing that I need to do to get through to the final. Is Crystal Vale making an appearance at the moment? Should I be looking out for her, or...? She's in the trees at the moment. Yeah! There she is. I went to a party like that once. Right, let's see if Carla's spirit guide, Crystal Vale, can help her over the locks. <laughs> Didn't help her onto the pontoon, but she's up. OK, a bit of support now would be good. Oh, that's a no-show from Crystal Vale. Yeah, swim back to the start. This is 19-year-old Emma, our seventh contestant. This is for my family and friends back home. Watch me kick some butt! All right. Emma's a kickboxer from Northern Ireland, so she should have the agility, focus and raw power required to get across those logs. Once she's got onto the pontoon here, they're, they're waiting. The rolling logs, Emma, the first obstacle over there. If you get onto the... That's the path you're trying to get... Oh. Almost a minute in now, and we are at the first obstacle. The rolling logs. Here we go. Oh. Ow. Ow. Ah. Emma called it a day after just one log, which is a total wipeout record. But that one log... What a log it was. Let's take a look where everybody is on the leaderboard. Of those who actually finished, Dan the Ginger Ninja is in first place, followed at some distance by Manda and Carla. 
Carrie Ann, Gentle Giant Dickie, and Shrieking Laura are in fourth, fifth, and sixth, but I'm guessing not for long as we meet our next contestant. This is 20 year old Joe from London who's told us it's his destiny to win Total Wipeout. Let's see if fate wants him to get across the rolling logs. He's on the first. Looking good, that's smooth. Whoa! Oh. He's onto the third one. How did he do that? Come on then, Destiny Joe, this might just be the week. Maybe someone's gonna make it. Come on, Joe. It's your destiny to be here. It is my destiny. Hold on, Joe. Hold, hold, hold. Oh! Poor Joe. Wasn't his fault, though. It was Destiny's. Next to tackle the qualifier is Barry from County Durham. He's a builder, he's hard as nails, and he's a granddad? He is. Hi, I'm Barry Brown, and this course is going down. Shoot that. <laughs> Barry has to be the hardest looking granddad I've ever seen. He's built like a brick retirement home. Come on, pass that. Onto the rolling logs. What's your granddad? A steady start on the logs from Action Grandad. But he is looking good up there. Amazing, keeping his balance. Got a transfer now from second to third. Will he do it? That's astonishing. He's across. Must be all the cod liver oil. Four gallons a day, maybe. It's Barry versus the Sucker Punch. Watch out, Wall. Barry is the sort of contestant that might just punch you back. That's who I think he's going to. And he makes it across. Incredible stuff from Barry. This is how the qualifier's done. Just the balls now. Oh, dear. <laughs> Such a letdown. It's all so promising. I wonder if 29-year-old personal assistant Natalie Tapper can better action Grandad on the balls. OK, Natalie, here we go. Breathe, focus, jump. Oh, that must have hurt. Type this up for me, would you please, Ms Tapper? Thank you. Your dad and you have a son at home now is he as excited as you are I uh, he probably tops me actually he is really excited and he's given me tips as well what kind of tips has he got the giant balls he's actually said what I'm to do I'm not allowed to try and run across it I've got to try and jump on it and spread myself on it and that's it nothing else great advice from 41 year old Daz's son Daniel jump and spread jump and spread so here we go jump Spread. Oh, oh! It worked. Jump and oh, where was the spread? I think it's his face spread all over that ball. Great strategy from young Daniel there. Bad execution by Dad. Sorry, Daniel. Let you down. This is 28-year-old Eloise from London. What do you think her job is? Clown? Kids entertainer? Monkey impersonator? No, obviously, Eloise is a doctor. I, for one, am slightly worried. <laughs> Eloise, you're a doctor. Is there anything you can take for that? <laughs> Let's see if her banana diet will help her across the rolling logs. Looking good, balanced, in control. Whoa, clear! After a fantastic run, all Dr Monkey has to do is land in the bubble bath, uh, and she doesn't. You have to let go, Eloise. This isn't a zoo. That's not a tyre swing. It's not just Eloise. The bubble bath has proved a tricky obstacle for several competitors today. A clean landing in the donut is vital for a good qualifying time. Never thought I'd say that. 37-year-old pool table maker Paul couldn't quite get there. 28-year-old knitting enthusiast Louise was thrown off balance by a heavy pair of leg warmers. You see the effect? Just, you've got to think what you're going to wear. 31-year-old dentist Steve finds himself missing the cavity. You see what, 
也给。Can't tell you how we make the foam in there, but there are no little bottles of shampoo left in our hotel bathrooms. Well, needs must. We've seen 15 contestants now, so we've only got five more left. Let's hope they're either athletic gods with superhuman skill and agility, or that they're just very clumsy and funny to watch. Let's take a quick peek at the leaderboard first. Dan the Ginger Ninja is riding high, with Destiny Joe and Dr. Monkey in second and third. Action Grandad is in fourth, and Paul the Pool in sixth. Crystal Vale is keeping Carla in ninth place, and knitting enthusiast Louise is just hanging in there in twelfth place. But there's still five to go. Let's get back to the course. Next, tackling the sucker punch is 40-year-old Gary. He's from Glasgow, he loves gardening, and he's a huge Cindy Lauper fan. And he's prepared to admit that on television. So this one's for you, Gary. Never mind, Gary. This will cheer you up, possibly after being punched in the face. Ah, Cindy. That's hard. I climbed the rose highs volcano earlier this year. That's harder. I have no idea what you just said. This is web designer James. At six foot four, this man mountain is our biggest competitor. But does size matter? I like to swim. I like to play football, and I do kung fu as well. Ooh, kung fu! Give me some, uh, give me some special kung mo fu moves. Uh, I'll give you a high kick. How about that? Oh yes, please. I love a high kick. Ready for this? I just saw your tonsils. We've paired him against deputy shop manager Joe. At five foot three inches, she's our shortest competitor, and says size doesn't matter. Let's put that to the test. Well, it's true, we haven't. Who said that? Where's Jo? Oh, there she is. If you look very carefully, you can just see her in the middle there at the top of the ramp. So let the contest begin. <laughs> Ask girly scream from Jo. <laughs> Identical girly scream from James. <laughs> Still nothing in it. <laughs> OK. Right, we've got to roll these. We'll do it this way. Can we work that way? Well, little legs are working for little Jo. Yep. So far, these two seem pretty evenly matched. Ooh, there you go. Test number two, the sucker punch. Little Joe can easily avoid the top row, of course. Just not the other rows. <laughs> Will height be an advantage for James? No, oh, that's six foot four inches of no. So still neck and neck as we approach the big balls. Will small Joe be the first to cross them? Come on, balls. Well, she's on to the first one. Safe and steady. Oh, she's on to the second. And she's on. She's on. Oh, this is getting tricky now. The pressure must be unbelievable. Oh, this is amazing. Joe is our first contestant to get this far. Come on, Joe. Oh, I can't believe this. She's actually on the fourth ball. She's on the fourth ball. Yes! 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 This is amazing. Just a short swing and she's done it. Oh. Oh. But what about James? Can he be the second person ever to do this? Come on! No. So what have we learned? We've learned that short people are better than tall people at getting across big, inflatable balls. Good girl. That must feel good. You all right? Congratulations, Joe, on being the first Brit across the balls. Wow. What a moment. It's taken five weeks and 98 contestants, but we finally got there. Two more contestants to go. Let's get back to the course. I need a rest. 
Here's our penultimate competitor, 40-year-old Middlesbrough mum, Carol. Unfortunately for Carol, we join her on the balls, and she's got quite an act to follow here. Well, come on, then. Oh, it's a great landing. She's on to the second. Big red you, balls. You don't think... Lightning couldn't strike twice, could it? I don't believe this. Three big red balls. It's never happened at all, and then all of a sudden... No way! Oh, big red balls! I can't watch! I can't watch! No! Oh. Yes? <laughs> Oh, this is uncomfortable now. If you'd done that a quarter of an hour ago, Carol, we would have you know, all, all, all this. We've we've peaked, is what we've done. We oh, hang on. There. Congratulations, Carol. Your total wipeout second person to cross the balls. Well, it's like being a second man on the moon, you know, um, wherever he was. To our final runner, then. I hope he doesn't break any records or run out of champagne. I'm doing it for the geeks, Amanda. I'm doing this for the scrawny kids. I'm doing this for the kids who were uh, bullied by their PE teachers in school. Watch out, guys! Here comes Macho Man! <laughs> this is 23-year-old charity worker Samuel. I'm a bit worried he might snap. Let's wait and see. On to the rolling logs. Come on, Samuel! Doing it for the geeks. He's going to clear it. He's cleared them. That is the fastest time across the rolling logs so far today. Time for the sucker punch. This will bring back memories from school. Give me, a, give me dinner money and move on. Oh! Well, we've had Britain's hardest granddad. I think Samuel might be Britain's hardest geek. Shrugging off the punch, laughing at the mud. OK, here we go. Geeky Sam has run the big ball through a computer simulation. Will trajectory calculations help him over? He's away. You see, kids? Oh, that's why you should concentrate on maths at school. So near. And yet so far. It was a determined effort, though. I thought he was going to clear them without touching them. It looked like he was going to dive across. Well, his time Samuel. is looking good. If he can make it into that donut with a good landing. And he has! 1 minute 35. Now that is fast. Score for the geeks! So we've reached the end of the qualifier. He didn't make the balls, but let's find out where that superb time put Super Geek Sam on the leaderboard. <laughs> and it is victory for the geeks. Samuel is in first place, with Ginger Ninja Dan pushed into second and Jumbo James in third. Dr. Monkey is the quickest woman in fifth. Daz, Gary and Paul the Pool are in 7th, 8th and 9th. And in 10th and 11th, we've crowned them queens of the balls. It is Joe and Carol. The good news, we've found our top 12 competitors. The bad news is that they've all crept up 13-foot poles. How on earth will we get them down? Oh, yeah, the sweeper. <laughs> It's the fifth outing for this infamous obstacle. Who could forget last week when Dino, John and James gave us some of the most spectacular falls of the series so far? The last six to stay on their podiums go through to the next round. The other six are eliminated. Let's meet the 12. On podiums one, two and three. It's Queen of the Balls Joe, Destiny Joe and Steve the Dentist. I'm going to jump like a kangaroo. Let's do this! He's a dentist. On four, five and six, it's Dad Daz, Paul the Pool... Take a look, guys. I'm going to be the last man standing. ..and Ginger Ninja Dan. I'm going higher! He's not a singer. On seven and eight, it's Action Grandad Barry... Barry Brown ain't going down. ..and Jumbo James. This is my natural habitat, and you lot are getting out of my habitat. Yeah, whatever. On nine, it's Glasgow gardener Gary. They have to stand up. Y yeah, you will, Gary. On ten, it's Dr Monkey Eloise. Forget last man standing. I'm going to be the last woman standing. 
And on 11 and 12, it's the other queen of the balls, Carol and Super Geek Sam. So here are our contestants, standing like the 12 hours on a clock face, except time is about to run out for six of them. Are you all ready? Yeah! <laughs> Three, two, one! It's time to get jumping. And that's Gary down straight away. Quickly followed by Destiny Joe. So let's just see that again. Glasgow Gardener Gary loses his footing and is the first to be eliminated. While Destiny Joe hits the water like a sack of spuds. Oh, that was a proper belly flop. <laughs> oh, my God. James slips but manages to clamber back onto his podium. Take it, so two have fallen, but four oh, must be go. eliminated. Well done. These remaining ten are doing very well. That sweeper gets faster and higher with every revolution. Oh. So it's only going to get harder on. to stay on. Oh, no. Someone's got to go soon. Ooh, Dad Dad's having a few problems. This is extraordinary. They're all just hanging in there. The speed of it now. As that approaches, it's got to be terrifying. <laughs> oh, Carol's off. Oh, she may have beaten the big balls, but she couldn't defeat the sweeper. I'm gutted that that's to come off. Really gutted. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Well, nine still standing, but there can be only six. The next three to fall are out. Oh, that's Dad Daz. Daz kisses goodbye to his podium and any chance of winning that ten grand. I wanted to get there more than anything, more than anything, and it's sticking in my throat a little bit. Two more to fall now, and that arm is getting higher. Getting hit by that's gonna be messy. Yeah. Two more. No! Oh! Oh! And Joe is out. That was one hell of a fall. Oh, and with that spectacular rag doll impersonation, both our queens of the balls have gone, claimed by the sweeper. That was quite scary. <laughs> I did better than I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to be off on the first jump. We're down to seven contestants. We need to lose one more. Ooh! And it's nearly James. Great recovery from the big guy there. So it's Steve, Paul, Dan, Barry, James, Eloise, and Samuel. The next one to fall will lose their place in the next round. Oh no! And it's Jumbo James! He just couldn't hang on that time. He's gonna be so annoyed with that. I definitely would have thought I would have won this competition. You know, what can I say? I'm just devastated, to be honest. I'm really devastated. So we have our six now playing for last man standing. Oh, and Steve has gone! Five left. It's carnage out there. Oh, <laughs> absolute mayhem. The ginger ninja gets clobbered. Oh. Action Grandad cops it right in the chest. The speed of it now. Oh, Paul, he just falls off. So we have two left. Eloise makes it over. And that's Sam down. Our lovely face plant there from the Super Geek Sam. Which means, for the second time in the series, we have a last woman standing. Dr. Monkey Eloise. <laughs> so those lucky six, well, lucky and very good at jumping six, have got that bit closer to winning today's £10,000 prize. 
but three will be eliminated in the next round. It's time to sort the men from the boys, the mice from the men, and the women from the less good women. We really could do with a metaphor for women there. It's time to play Dizzy Dummies. Here's how it's going to go. That dizzy dummy will spin our competitors round and round until they're, well, very dizzy. Then they must cross the spinning discs, which makes them more dizzy, before racing like gazelles over the barrel crossing. The last one over is eliminated. But it doesn't stop there. Just as the remaining five regain their balance, they're put back in the dizzy dummy to do it twice more until we're left with our three wipeout zone finalists. Let's meet today's dizzy dummies. I'm Dan, the Ginger Ninja. It's Ginger Ninja Dan. I'm going to tackle this course. He lives in a trick. Yeah. Hi, I'm Barry Brown. Action granddad Barry. This course is going down. Shoot that. He's the hardest granddad on earth. Take a look, guys. He's called Paul, and he makes pool tables. I'm going to be the last man standing. It's Paul the Pool. You get it? She's a full-time doctor and a part-time monkey. It's Eloise. <laughs> He's a full-time dentist. I'm going to jump like a kangaroo. And a part-time... Oh, anyway... It... Let's do this. Steve the Dentist. Here comes Macho Man. Last but not least, it's Sam the Super Geek. What do you get when you cross a giant roundabout, six really nervous contestants, and the incentive to win £10,000? Dizzy dummies, of course. Are you all ready? Yeah! It's time to get spun! Ah. Three, two, one! Here we go. 40 long seconds of gut-wrenching spinning. This could cost you five quid at the fairground, and we're just giving it away. They don't look like they're enjoying it. Be grateful. Ah! And they're off. Well, Paul's off. Oh. <laughs> Paul the pool's in the pool, which means Paul must go back to the start, which isn't really very far, is it? Dr. Monkey leaps for it. Oh, and Eloise is in. Oh, not as easy as it looks. Sam the Super Geek is in. Oh. Speed and angle of approach calculations all wrong there. He'll be the laughing stock at Science Club after this, he will. Dan now pushing on, taking it steady. Not far to go now for Dan. Ooh. Oh, oh, Eloise goes for a nosedive, and Dan is first across. He's safe for now. Oh, Grandad Barry. Action Grandad Barry is across, though. He is through. Paul the Pool scrambles his way home to join Dan and Barry safely on the other side. So, just Dr Monkey, Sam the Super Geek and Steve the Dentist remain. Who will be eliminated? One of these is going out. Not a good time to fall in, Steve. Eloise and Samuel are close to making it. Eloise has made it. Samuel's nearly there too. Steve's right back at the start. It's not looking good for Steve now. Super Geek Sam has done it, which means Steve the Dentist is out of the competition. I don't know what happened. Those are really greasy and slippery, those things. I just fell off. I couldn't get any grip. So now they are five, but only three can go through to the final. So it's back in the Dizzy Dummy for a little more spinning. This time, though, our competitors must face the obstacle whose name alone strikes terror into the heart of anyone who hears it. The Tippy Tables. <coughs> so we join our dummies as they're nearing the end of their spin cycle. That's gonna hurt. Lucky, lucky people. How will they do? 
Okay, they're out. Yeah, Barry's been on the sherry. Having a little pause for thought there. <laughs> All at once. Action Grandad seizes the moment. Amazing stuff across the first tippy table. On to the second. He's across. Oh, He's through. Yeah. An incredible run. That was astonishing. Eloise, Dan and Sam all in the water. Paul the pool is going for it. He's going for it with a lovely run. He should be proud of himself. Apart from getting beaten by someone's granddad. Ginger Ninja Dan. Up on his feet starts his charge. While Eloise starts her swim. And Dan stays in the competition. Between Eloise and Samuel. Oh, Samuel just can't hold on. Giving Dr. Monkey Eloise her chance. Eloise is gone. Now it's Sam the Super Geek with a chance. Sam's up and going for it. Got a transfer to the second tippy table. This is the dodgy moment. He's across there. He's done it. He is over. It is goodbye then to Dr. Monkey Eloise. Fair play to everybody. They did really well. It's very difficult. It's a lot harder than it looks. You, well, you are only woman left, so we're going to have to lose you, I'm afraid. But go join the others. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eloise. Well done. So we are down to four contestants. But as we've learned by now, Total Wipeout can come up with the odd surprise. And on this occasion, it was an unwelcome surprise for Barry. He received an injury on the spinner. It's a real shame. Barry's been a fantastic competitor. Sure our medical team have had a look at him, and unfortunately, with an injury to his arm, he can take no further part in the game. With Barry out, we have our three finalists, so there's no need to run the dizzy dummies a third time. So, Samuel, Dan and Paul go through to the wipeout zone. Let's remind ourselves of their journeys. To make it through to the final total wipeout is I'm overwhelmed. I won a Tiddlywinks competition in 1992. It felt amazing. I won an orange and an apple. I don't think anyone expected to see me, Dan and Paul in the final. I am petrified about facing the wipeout zone. Run, run, run as fast as I can. That's, that's the only tactic I'm going to have. When the adrenaline starts kicking in and, and the nerves and the excitement all in one, my heart's going to be pounding ten to the dozen. It would mean the world for me to win Total Wipeout. It'd be totally amazing. It's been a crazy, surreal experience. It's, like, it's just like a dream. I keep having to pinch myself. The, the last thing I won was the, uh, the Father's Day race at my uh, daughter's school sports day. I'm representing all the gingers out there. I'm doing it for the geeks. I'm doing it for the scrawny guys. All the normal family guys, all the good dads out there. I'm doing it for them tonight. A tiny little part of me is just starting to think, Maybe I could actually win this. Day turns to night. Excitement turns to fear. Amanda turns to drink. Keep warm, obviously. But there's none of that for our three finalists who are preparing for the run of their lives in the wipeout zone. Here's what our three finalists are up against. First, it's the killer cell. Then, it's a game of 50 kilo barrel dodging. There's 2,000 litres of water a minute waiting to greet the finalists at the wipeout wall. Timing is everything on the spinner. Then, a dash along the balance beam, over the launch pads, and onto the final podium. The fastest will be crowned total wipeout champion and walk away with 10,000 pounds sterling. It's the wipeout zone, and our first finalist to brave it tonight is Samuel. Here goes nothing. Samuel, the super geek, is off. He's the fastest in the qualifier. Can he do it again where it really counts? He's the most surprised of all to be here, I think. These beams coated in grease, incredibly slippy. Up quickly, straight onto the barrel run. The first barrel. Oh, look at the super geek go! He's going faster than a yes. photon or something that he'd understand about, but I don't. It's onto the wall. Come on, Samuel. Oh, 
Samuel. He's doing brilliantly. Just don't fall off here, Sam. You fall off an obstacle, you've got to swim round back to the start, cross it again. He's making steady progress. And he's across, he's made it to the end, nearly. Right, his next move takes him onto the spinner. One mistake here, he has to do the wall all over again. He's onto the spinner. He's got to get up onto his feet and off it and time his exit. Stand up! Stand up! This jump is critical. A lot of competitors fall off here. He's on, he's made it, he's safe. Right, the rolling beam next. And oh dispatches that one. Oh, no! Oh, no! Overcooked it. He's in the water. He's losing vital seconds on what was a brilliant time until that second. He is going to regret that. Back onto the start of the rolling beam. He's got to clear that. And then the launch pads. Come on, Samuel. Having another attempt at the launch pad. Oh. Save on one. Got to make the move to the second. One bouncing. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's fallen back in the water at the same point. That's going to damage his time. Come on, Sam. This must be demanding everything he's got left to give just to carry on, just to get back onto the obstacle. <laughs> Sam has... Oh, no, he's done it again! Oh, he was as surprised as anyone to be in the final. This will be breaking his heart. That's one wet super geek, and not a happy one, I suspect. Dragging his drained body back up to try and clear. He's on the first. He's onto the second launch pad. Fourth time lucky, that super geek rules. He's made it and sets a time of 5.50. That is still a time to beat. <laughs> it's a great run. Samuel made an astonishing start. But those launch pads got the better of him. Did he do enough, though, to win that 10,000 pounds? He's still in it. Listen, you were so geek chic <laughs> all the way until you got to the launch pads. And now I kind of realize why you were last in PE in school. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd get this far and no one could take that away from me. Your time was 5 minutes and 50 seconds. So, up next <laughs> is Dan. Ginger Ninja Dan, poised at the top of Killer Surf. He lives in trees, so he's not scared of heights. The Ginger Ninja is off. A swim now to the barrel run. Barrel's waiting as soon as he hits the base of that slope. The first one on its way. Oh, that barrel's battered him. Oh, and that one. In fact, here come two more. Oh, oh, the Ginger Ninja having a horrible time with the barrels right back at the bottom of the ramp. So Sam the Super Geek might still be in with a chance of winning that 10 grand. The Ginger Ninja off again, doing better. Can he make it this time? Up and onto the wall, yes. For Dan, of course, there's just a rainy day in the treetops, eating his way across a bow, maybe, to the front door of his tree house. Smooth, steady progress. He's across. Now the leap onto the spinner, or as the Ginger Ninja Dan calls it, the giant mushroom in the forest where he lives. He's on. He's not waiting around, he's up on his feet already. And straight across onto the next platform, that's quick. He doesn't know how far Sam the Super Geek went, or even that this is where it all went wrong for him. Ah, out, that's amazing. Straight onto the first launch pad. Oh, just clings to the second. That's the way to do it. And what a finish, what a time. He took one minute, 50 seconds. That's staggering. 
Ginger Ninja Dan is now the man to beat. He may have fallen short on the barrel run. He really did look like he was struggling there. But he made up for it on the launch pads. That is going to be a tough time to beat. You are truly the Ginger Ninja. That felt good. Yeah. I can tell you, Dan, that you were indeed faster, so yours is the time to beat for now. But let's just see if you were fast enough because it all lies in the hands of Paul. Let's do this, Paul. 37-year-old Paul is a skiing fan, so maybe the killer surf presenting no problem for him. Into the water, and it's a very fast swim towards the barrels. Up and running. Oh, slip over, slip and so over. fast, the barrels just can't come quickly enough to bother him. Dispatching those with ease onto the wall. And again, Paul making amazing progress across the wall. Keeping his weight low, looking very in control. Right, he's got to make his move onto the spinner. Timing is everything, he's on. Now he's going to time his exit. Up and onto the rolling beam now, psyching himself ready for that. A fall here would hurt. He's cleared that with ease. Oh, he's fallen. That's going to... That must be... That has brought the time so close now. It's, it's hard to watch. Rise back up with the first of the launch pads in front of him. He doesn't know, remember the time of his opponent. Oh, he's under the first launch pad. This is, I can't watch. This is so close now. Oh, I'm shaking so much. Dude. He's psyching himself for the leap to the second launch pad. He must know that a fall here would cost him everything. He's onto the finish pad. He's got to stop the clock and he's done it. Incredible, just three seconds in it. That is almost unbelievable. Great technique from Paul the Paul. Despite that slip on the launch pads, he's still today's big winner. But he doesn't know that yet, and Amanda is about to break the news. Hey, my man Paul, come on over. Woo! How are you feeling? Oh, well, fantastic. All right, well, I can tell you both now, Dan and Paul, that there were three seconds between you. Dan did a great job. Paul, you did an incredible job. And the fastest person here tonight, and the winner of £10,000 and is the total wipeout champion, is Paul! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh! Dan! Dan! Oh, mate. Mate. Congratulations to Pool Paul, or as his friends know him, Paul Williams. That was very close. Unfortunately, it's back to the woods for Ginger Ninja Dan, or as his friends know him, Ginger Ninja Dan. And let's not forget the first time we saw the big balls being conquered. Will it happen again next week, when there'll be lots of this? <laughs> and lots of this. From Amanda and me, it's goodbye. <laughs>